So this is an advanced higher chemistry uh, lesson, um, and this is to do with the second half of unit one, which is all about physical chemistry. Now, the topic that we're going to look at today, and it's the largest topic within the physical chemistry section, is chemical equilibrium. So there will be a number of lessons looking at equilibrium. Uh, in today's lesson, we will be looking at um, what uh, circumstances lead to an equilibrium forming. We'll be learning about the equilibrium expression and the equilibrium constant and being able to calculate that. So firstly, in order for an equilibrium to be set up, a reaction needs to be reversible. And uh, that means reversible at the conditions at which you're starting the reaction. Uh, when we have an equilibrium set up, it means that the rate of the forward and the rate of the reverse reactions are identical to one another. And once you reach equilibrium, the concentration of your uh, reactants and the concentration of your products remains constant. Now, that's not to be confused with uh, the concentration of your, your reactants and your concentration of your products are the same. Uh, all that means is that once you reach equilibrium, the concentrations do not change. Um, products are being turned into reactants and reactants are constantly being turned into products, but because the rates are equal, the concentrations remain constant. And because once you reach equilibrium, you have constant concentrations of all the chemicals involved, it allows you to um, use those concentrations as a way of defining equilibrium. And um, we define the equilibrium by something called the equilibrium constant, which is given the letter K. So for this reaction at the top, we have got uh, two reactants, A and B, and their stoichiometry is given by the small letters A and B. And they are in equilibrium with two products, C and D, with the small c and the small d representing the stoichiometry of those reactants. And this expression, uh, which is given to you in the data booklet, allows you um, to always define the equilibrium constant. So the equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of reactant, of sorry, of product C, um, which is taken to the power of the stoichiometry of C, multiplied by the concentration of reactant D, which is taken to the power of the stoichiometry of reactant D. And that is divided by the same thing for the reactants, A to the power of small a and B to the power of small b. So K is the equilibrium constant, and it's really important to remember that it has no units. Um, it may seem counterintuitive um, that it has no units, but uh, regardless of what powers your concentrations are to, um, K has no units. Uh, anything inside square brackets in chemistry uh, represents a concentration. So where we see the capital letters in square brackets, that means the concentration of those reactants, and the small letters represent the stoichiometry, or you could remember it as the molar ratio values. So here we have an example. Um, we have hydrogen reacting with iodine um, reversibly setting up an equilibrium with hydrogen iodide. In this expression, K is equal to concentration of product, so HI, and there are two HIs in the equation, so that is HI squared. And that is divided by the concentration of H2, A to the power of 1, so we don't need to write that, and I2 to the power of 1, so again, we don't need to write that. If you were doing this in an exam, you would be given information relating to those concentrations. And also, it's really important to remember that those are the concentrations once the reaction has reached equilibrium. They are not the concentrations you start with, because remember, obviously, the product, when you start the reaction, has a concentration of zero. 
So this is the concentration at the point equilibrium is reached and you would need to be provided with those values in order for you to actually calculate the value of the equilibrium constant. Now there are certain uh, issues with this because not every reactant or product um, can be described as having a concentration. Gases can have a concentration, you could have a number of moles occupying a particular volume, so that would be an expression in moles per litre, and with solutions the most common um, unit for that is moles per litre. And so gases and solutions can have concentrations, but liquids, water, doesn't have a concentration, and a solid, so um, like a, a metal, does not have a concentration. And this needs to get factored in whenever you are writing um, an equilibrium expression or trying to calculate an equilibrium constant. Where you see a solid or a liquid, so remember that's anything with the state symbol S or L, you treat the concentration as though it's the number one. And remember the number one um, to the power of anything is always one. And when you multiply any number by one, it is the number itself. So essentially what that means is you take any pure solids or pure liquids out of the equilibrium expression. However, you would need to write at some point, because this is a solid or because this is a liquid, its concentration is one in order for you to actually explain why you're doing that. So here we have an example of an equilibrium reaction and we have zinc doing a displacement with magnesium chloride uh, to end up with zinc chloride and magnesium. We can see we've got two chemicals in that equilibrium that have the aqueous state symbol and therefore do have concentrations and we have two solids zinc and magnesium which have S as their state symbol and therefore will end up with a concentration value of one. So we always write out the original equilibrium expression. So that would be uh, zinc chloride multiplied by magnesium divided by zinc multiplied by magnesium chloride because they're all in a one to one ratio. But then what we would need to do is specify, well, magnesium is a solid, zinc is a solid, so their concentration values are one. And then we can simplify the expression just to this. The equilibrium constant is zinc chloride divided by magnesium chloride. Now, we also need to know what information does the value of K um, tell us? Now, the equilibrium constant, it tells us the equilibrium position. It tells us whether or not this reaction is favouring the formation of products or whether it means that the reaction is actually um, sticking with the starting materials and not producing a lot of product. And how we can tell that is that um, when the equilibrium favours favors the product, our K value will be high. The concentrations of your products will be higher than your concentrations of your reactants and therefore K being high, that would usually mean a value over one, usually, but again, it really does depend on your starting concentrations. So if K is high, um, that means that your concentration of products will be greater than the concentration of your reactants and um, therefore your equilibrium is favoring products. If the equilibrium favors the reactants, your equilibrium constant will be low. And by low, we're talking numbers less than one. And less than one, that would be because the concentration of products is less than the concentration of reactants. Now, this is where you may um, be disappointed to hear that um, equilibrium was greatly simplified to you at higher, uh, almost to the point where you probably could classify it as you were taught a lie. Um, and I apologize for that. But the factors that can affect K, there's only one. 
and it is temperature. Temperature is the only thing that can actually affect the equilibrium constant and therefore the position of equilibrium. The factors that you learnt um, in higher concentration, pressure, uh, they will uh, force your system to make more product or make more reactant. Um, however, they are not actually affecting the equilibrium constant. The only thing that can do that is temperature. So the information you learnt in higher still applies. Um, if you increase the pressure, you will produce more of the products that have the lowest volume of gas. If you increase the concentration of a reactant, you will make more product. If you increase the concentration of a product, you will make more reactant. You are able to shift the balance. However, you're not actually affecting the intrinsic position of equilibrium. You're kind of doing tricks in order to promote production of a given product or reactant, but you're not affecting the equilibrium position. The only thing that can affect the equilibrium position is temperature. And later on in the course, whenever you um, learn about reaction feasibility, you will see why temperature has an effect on this um, equilibrium constant. But the rule is, and it's not changed, um, if the forward reaction is endothermic, meaning that um, if your reaction uh, requires um, energy to be absorbed from its surroundings, if you increase the temperature, you will increase the equilibrium constant. And remember, if the equilibrium constant is higher, the yield increases. So endothermic reactions, you're able to produce more product by increasing the temperature. And that's because it increases K. If the forward reaction is exothermic, uh, obviously that means that's a reaction that releases heat to the surroundings. If you increase temperature, it will decrease the equilibrium constant, which means that your yield of product decreases. So the equilibrium constant can only be affected by temperature. However, you are still expected to be able to remember from higher that you can force your system to make more product or reactant by changing concentration and pressure. However, they do not affect your equilibrium constant and catalysts as well do not affect the equilibrium constant. Only temperature. Now, uh, we're just going to finish uh, with practice question. So if you want to pause the video and have a go at doing this, but we have um, a reaction. So it's the Haber process. So you can see you've been given a balanced equation and you have been given an enthalpy change. You've also been given some concentrations at equilibrium and you've been asked to write an equilibrium expression and calculate K with appropriate units for the following data. So pause the video and have a go at that. When you unpause the video, let's see. So I'm hoping this is you having unpaused the video and what you will find is that should have been your equilibrium expression. They are all gases, therefore they all have concentrations. So there's nothing that we're turning into one and it is ammonia squared divided by nitrogen multiplied by hydrogen cubed which should be 2.4 squared divided by 0 0.8 multiplied by 1.2 cubed which is 4.16 in terms of units there should not be any units because remember the equilibrium expression has no units even if it looks like it should do. We never put units for the equilibrium constant. We've got a second question here. 
Again, if you want to pause the video to give yourself some time or just keep that idea in your head, then you can do so. But what will happen to K if the temperature is increased? Well, with this reaction, you can see that the forward reaction has a negative enthalpy, which means that it is exothermic. And exothermic reactions, if you increase the temperature, you decrease K.